Hi and welcome to this year's only TBR. In this video I'm talking about 6 books that have been recommended to me in the comment section. If you're new to this channel I'm Oistan and I talk about everything book related. In this video as I said my TBR for fan favorites of 2023 and the reason why it's the only one is because I never seem to finish my TBRs or I just give up from the moment I start them so why bother? Basically I'm a mood reader and it's hard for me to predict what I'm going to read next and enjoy. But reading 6 books in the course of the year I thought that should be really doable. Also I wanted to show you guys that I take your advice and read some of the books that you actually recommend to me because I really do enjoy when you comment in my comment section and I can take some recommendations with me. It's a great motivation and I know a lot of you guys also read some of my recommendations so it's just fair that I read some of yours. Without further ado here is the list. And the first one is Buddenbrook's The Decline of a Family by Thomas Mann. I really don't know how to pronounce the title but it was published in 1901 and Thomas Mann has been on my radar for quite some time but the first book I thought of reading when I started this YouTube channel was The Magic Mountain because I sort of thought that was the grand novel of his. Then I bought Death in Venice because it was shorter. Then Jake started talking about this one in the comment section and I looked it up. I sort of understood that this was the reason why Thomas Mann won the Nobel Prize for fiction and not the other ones. It's about this German merchant family that lived in the 1800s and we follow their decline. It's also said about this novel that Thomas Mann took a whole lot from his personal life and put it into this novel as well. His own experiences so I guess that's a bonus. If this one hadn't been recommended to me I'm pretty sure I would have started with one of the two other ones I have standing in my shelf because I'm afraid that this will be kind of slow paced. But that being said I'm trusting you in this and I will read this in 2023. One cool and insane thing about this novel is that Thomas Mann was 26 when this was published. So a 26 six year old writes this kind of novel and gets the Nobel Prize for literature. I was just kind of surprised. So I'm looking very much forward to reading this. The next novel is one that's in this video because I wanted to read another novel from the same author but people were against it. It's also the book that Dostoevsky has said is flawless supposedly. And of course that is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Of course War and Peace is the book that I've thought about reading sometimes but you guys thought that that would be kind of too much for me. I think you're right so that's why I'm thinking that this year I will be reading this one instead. And it's kind of fun because this seems to be the thing that you can all agree about that I should rather read Anna Karenina than War and Peace. So we'll start there. After what I understand there are two love stories in this novel. The first one being Anna from an upper class family marrying an officer and then life falls apart, drama happens and the second one is a landowner falling in love with a young woman and they live happily ever after at the farm enjoying the simpler things in life. That's probably a simplification of this novel. It's said to have over a dozen major characters and be quite complex. Also it's over 800 pages long so there will be enough of things to read about. I guess it's over 20 years since I bought my first Tolstoy novel so it's only fair that I actually read one of his books soon and making this kind of video is perfect in this circumstance. It will force me to read him. I've never really loved a classic classic novel that I've loved unconditionally so I'm sort of hoping that this will be it but I won't be disappointed if it's not. And sort of the basis for this video is that you've recommended me books and I hope I will enjoy them but it's not like I've seen a book and thought well this is going to be great. It's more like well this could work. I still have faith in these books in this video. The next one is sort of an enigma to me because when reading about the contents of it it seems very dark but when reading about people that have read it they seem to have had a fun time and it's all a bit weird to me but at least the next one is Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. So this one is about an older man. He falls in love with this 12 year old and to get closer to this 12 year old he marries her mother and when the thing with this 12 year old doesn't really work out he sort of loses it and starts stalking her I guess. This is of course a very famous book and a famous story and before I actually started reading about it I thought that this was pure darkness but now that I know that there's some comedy involved I guess I think this could be a very surprisingly fun read. I do really enjoy when people take dark subjects and make fun of them and 
I still feel like I don't know what this really is about, but I'm looking forward to reading it. And if you're now wondering if all the books on today's list are classics, almost is the answer, almost. Because number four on this list is no different. It came out in 1917 and it's The Growth of Soil by Knut Hamsun, probably one of Norway's most famous authors and one of the Norwegian authors that has received the Nobel Prize for Literature as well. The story is about this man called Isak. He moves to this very rural location and starts farming. And you can see this farm evolving through the years, but he stays the same humble man. For Norway, this is quite a significant novel. It is said to show how Norway evolved in the 1800s, moving from people producing goods for themselves to producing goods for money. Reading about it, it drew my mind to Haldor Laxnes and Independent People. Those two main characters might be a bit similar, but I do not know yet. Being published in 1917, it's also written during the First World War, and I've read many places that it's quite obvious that it's written during the First World War. So that will be interesting to have a closer look at. So that's number four. The fifth novel is actually a novel that you might have voted for because I did a poll some few weeks ago about which Shakespeare play I should read next. And the winner of that poll was Macbeth. I don't have the physical copy, but I might do something as crazy as reading a novel on my Kindle again or a play. So that will be a fun part of the experience. The reason why I wanted to read another Shakespeare play is of course because I enjoyed Hamlet and I do like to get some references and there might only be one reference that's better than Shakespeare and that's probably the Bible or any of the other religious scriptures. So reading Shakespeare is something I want to do more of until I'm fed up. The fun thing about being me in this scenario is that I do not know anything about Shakespeare or his plays almost. Whereas some people know everything that's going to happen, they just haven't read them. And I do like the feeling of starting at zero and then seeing where we end up. So three witches tell this Scottish general Macbeth that he is going to be the king. And naturally he kills the king and becomes king himself. And after that drama starts. Again, that's all I'm going to read about it because I'm afraid of spoilers. And it's only 91 pages long. So how much could happen in it? A lot, I guess. We'll just see. If someone had read that plot to me that I read to you, I would have thought that that was a lot less old than it actually is. And I find that fascinating and quite cool. I do think that I could read a whole lot of Shakespeare plays in the future, but it all depends on this one. So that's number five. I really don't know why there are so many classics on this list, but I do think that there are more classics being recommended to me than not. But also it's easier for me to remember classics because I've heard the name before. So maybe it's not all that good, but I'm taking this as an opportunity to read more classics. So. That's what we're going to do. Anyway, we're going to end this video with something new and exciting and it's Scythe by Neil Schusterman. So this is about an utopian dystopian place. There's no hunger, there's no disease and the scythes are the only people that can kill people. And it's about these two teens that are chosen to become scythes. And you can't really argue if you're chosen, you have to kill. And if you don't, you might be killed yourself. It just seems like a very cool plot and it's a YA novel in a series. So there might be other books I could read and enjoy. It also seems to be a lot of buzz around these novels these days, but that might just be that I've noticed them more. Who knows? But with all the classics on this list, this could be a real breath of fresh air. So I'm looking very much forward to reading this one. So now you know that I take your comments seriously and I hope you will continue to give me recommendations in the comments. Do you have any books that you really want to get through in 2023? Also comment that below. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.